All right. Hello, everyone. How are you today? It's Kay. So this is Saturday, on the 9th of April. So I hope you're having a great weekend today. So uh, yeah, let's see. Today, um, I don't think about any topics to talk about. So I'm thinking to do it as a free discussion. But uh, yeah, I guess... Uh, I will talk about something about psychology. Oh, did you check the video from yesterday about FOMO? I hope you enjoyed that video yesterday. Uh, yeah, I decided to take that video because recently I get these many questions and comments about FOMO or some related to FOMO questions. So I thought this is the right timing because the markets are basically quiet uh, on uh, Friday yesterday. So uh, I thought it was a good timing to talk about the psychology, so that's why I decided to talk about the FOMO, how to deal with the FOMO. So uh, yeah, let's see, but let me change screen and start to see some comments now. All right, but thank you for joining everybody, great to see you here. So uh, as a quick disclaimer, uh, this uh, content is all based on my own experience. So basically when you take trades, please do at your own risk and also since this is live if you can please follow the rules and guidelines that would be great because after all we're all here to learn and also recently there are so many fake SNS accounts so just be careful I have no telegram no Instagram no Facebook and I never send any direct messages so please be careful all right so yeah let me say hi to everybody Thank you for joining everybody, Arnold and uh, Carbon, Fibonacci, Marcus, thank you for joining. And uh, Ciro, thank you for joining on my Ichimo community. All right, stay gold, thank you so much. And uh, oh yeah, today there will be Ichimoku membership live after this public. And I will start to introduce some of the teaching from the original books. So today is the first day I share what's written on the original book. And that's why I was... Uh, I was uh, reading this one. This is the first volume of original book. And uh, this was something that I was reading today. And um, there are other books in the bookshelf. And I will pull this. Uh, I will start to introduce what's written in here. So, so far in my Ichimo community, uh, I wrote three books so far. Ichimo Basic Master Book and Ichimo Basic Theories Book. And then Kyushu Ashi book. But uh, I haven't introduced what's written exactly on the original book. So I think today is the first day I will do it today. Uh, due to copyright, I can share the copy on the original book. But uh, yeah, I hope uh, you can enjoy what exactly the original creator was talking about the Ichimo. All right, and let's see who else is here. David on my way, Mahardika and William Peter, thank you for joining. Alex FX and uh, Charlie, or oh, Eugene, thank you for joining. And Rohit and Chu, Butha, thank you for joining as well. All right. Oh, David says, I formed into this live. Okay. <laughs> yeah, welcome joining here. Welcome here. Yeah, Egg Hagal. You watched the formal video, okay? Thank you for watching that. Yeah, I hope you liked it. Well, actually, there are so many things I want to talk about about the formal. Not only the things only that I talked yesterday, but also, yeah, many other things. Because all after all, it's all about, it's all about psychology. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, because I, ha I have a psychological background. It's always interesting to talk about psychology. Yeah, thank you for joining everybody. Khalid Al Harris and uh, Mahesh Rohit, thank you for joining. Great to see you. 416 also, good to see you too. Jack says, which one do you think it's better Forex futures? I think Forex. I have been trading Forex only. I never trade futures, so I'm not sure. But uh, as far as I trade Forex, uh, Forex is good because you can 
make profits both by buying it and selling it. So, trend follow is a key to success in Forex or any, any markets, I think. It's a, it's a rule. Kale says, I have learned from your videos that the root, root cause of my past trading failure had to do with my unhealthy psychology. Okay. Yeah, psychology is the very key. First, when you go into, when you get involved into tradings, maybe you thought, okay, I have to study strategies. I have to master strategies, where to enter, where to exit. And I think, you know, I thought that's all I care. And after practicing it, and after to take trades real time, then I thought, okay, I have to master risk management because without risk management, I can lose big. So I started to learn risk management and then realized, oh, psychology is also even more important than strategies. And then learned about psychology. So I think that's a typical step. Strategy, risk management, and then psychology. Dennis Wen says, uh, Hi K, understood uh, you took around three years to be proficient and profitable. Is it the trading skills that took time or more time in mastering trading psychology? Um, I would say trading psychology. Um, it's kind of hard to say because yeah, everything is like together. So like, it's like a, yeah, like a wheel on the cars. If you miss one part, then you can't really you know, run the car. So strategy, risk management, and psychology are re closely related with each other. But uh, yeah, because like uh, my impression was three years. So I, I took three years to be profitable. But in three years, of course, I have experienced psychology. I have experienced formal or, uh, you know, any other stress in trading. But uh, the real breakthrough happened um, when I started not to depend on the indicators, not depending on the paid indicators and not to start to look for holy grail. And then I start to be profitable. I think that was one of the enlightenment. Yeah, I think uh, that's that's the turn, turn out. I think uh, yeah. So first, I studied strategies. I studied so many strategies back then. Yeah, like these uh, major ones, minor ones. I have studied. Also, I was using Ichimoku. But I wasn't using the original setting, 9.25 and uh, 20, uh, 9.26 and 52, I didn't use that originally. I was using it before, but afterwards I started to use, like uh, I started to change the parameters and also offset, I changed also. I even lay out like uh, multiple Kumos or multiple Tenkan Kijun Sen or uh, yeah, I did many things in Ichimoku. And when I kept doing that, I was losing, losing. Not because I didn't respect the original setting, but uh, the reason why I, I keep losing was that um, I was chasing, I was looking for, how do you say, like in Japanese, uh, we chase the fog. Like the fog, it's just fog. You can't capture the fog, but uh, as I keep chasing the fog, that was when I was kept losing. That was the most struggle part. And when I realized myself that, okay, chasing fog is not the answer. And then afterwards, I start to be profitable. I think that's what it was. But uh, yeah, it's been uh, quite a journey. Yes. Yeah, for me, it took me three years, but for someone, it takes longer or shorter. But uh, even after I keep winning, um, the journey never ends. So I keep studying. I keep studying the markets 
previous markets and I keep back testing myself and I keep training myself. Yeah, otherwise I won't be able to make profits in the long run. Okay, I see some comments now. So yeah, thank you for joining everybody. Great to see you. This is Saturday live stream. So I'm being I'm going a bit casually today. Kind of talk free talk style. As markets quiet, markets of course are closed in the yeah, just relaxing Saturday session today. Well, thank you for joining and uh, Salwat, thank you for joining from India, good to see you. And uh, yeah, thank you for joining. Yes, thank you Kay, each by watching your video, I learned something new things. That's good to hear. Hear. Andrew Law says, do you think uh, some bankman field, uh, 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 field is the crypto BNF. I'm not sure about that one. Not sure. Hello, James and uh, Sandy and Dirk, Ricky, TikTok. Thank you for joining. Great to see you. Ek Hagao says, I've seen many copy trader on ads recently. Uh, they introduced new trader to open new trading account, and all they have to do is pay money and subscribe to copy trader. As they call the master trader okay yeah personally I I never became profitable by copy trade at least as far as my experience so that's why I don't do copy trade and I never offer copy trade and I never send trading signals either because that's not the way we make profits at least for me I don't depend on I don't depend on the signals and that's why I don't really offer that and it's possible you can trade manually see charts manually screen charts manually and take trades exit manually and uh, I think that will be the most joy than taking trades by the copy trades I'm a very like a manual person I like to do things manually so even the cars I prefer manual stick shift than automatic Right now, I'm driving automatic, but uh, if I have my own car, then I want to have the manual shift. So uh, I want to do things manually because that's fun. Yeah, let's see. Let me check some other comments now. And Alex FX says, what do you say about not predicting uh, what the market will do, but... Uh, Reacting is what I fully believe in and I think that's amazing advice. Also, like you say about we can't forecast improbabilities. Yep, that's true. Yeah, we are not here to predict the future. Future is unpredictable. So why should we try to predict, predict the future? Yeah, without predicting the future, you can still make profits. Yeah, good for psychology. Yeah, let's see. Also, by counting candles and comparing to Ichimoku lines and coming back to, coming back when Junsen down. Yeah. Prabhat says, uh, what do you do if you don't use indicator? Just candles. I'm almost an year trader. Yes, I used to trade candles only. Candles and also um, lines. Price actions only trade. That was when I lost so much money in trading. And then I deleted all the indicators. I, I literally deleted from the trash box. I was using so many, I was having so many paid indicators. I was buying the indicators. And buying the templates and buying other uh, platforms too but I deleted all these and uh, went back to the pure price action and so it, but if because if you can read whether the, whether the markets up or down the price actions 
then you can still trade. You can still capture the trend directions and you know which way which way the market's going exactly until when and when the market's going towards this way and that way and uh, you can trade according to this direction. AOM says, uh, is price action work with daily candle? Yep, it works on any time frames. Price action works on any time frames. John Harris says, uh, would you do a Forex challenge? You can start from 1000 and grow it from there. Will help those with small funds and teach us how to manage the risk with that amount. No, I don't. I don't do a Forex challenge because I don't have to now. But uh, yeah, because I never did the Forex challenge before, like FTMO, I never had before. But I think that's good for those who want to start small. I think that's a good one. Because back in Japan, um, like FTMO or other challenge is not really famous. And I didn't know anything about that information. So simply, I didn't do that. I had no chance to know it. So simply, uh, in my entire career, I have been only trading with my own money, with my own fund, and I never trade for someone. Uh, yeah, and I think that's one of the reasons why I was able to build a discipline and also confidence in trading. Yeah, if I still trade for someone, then uh, I might not be able to build such confidence, maybe. Oh. Yeah, John On, thank you for joining. Serena says, uh, Hi, K, everyone. I'm just saying hello, but I can't say... I can't stay. Okay, okay. Thank you for joining. You see here. Yeah, it's always nice and stop by and say hi. Because uh, this is Saturday. It's relaxing here. Oh. Oh, it says uh, F1 Sushi. That's an interesting name. He says, Hi, K. Are there specific pairs you feel more confident and at ease trading? Uh, or do you rely more on discipline and trust your system no matter what pairs you're analyzing? Um, yeah, so I have these pairs on my watch list. Well, let me switch the screen. Yeah, so you can see. Let me try to fit the page. So you can see the pairs on, on the right. I monitor Euro USD all the way down to Swiss franc JPY. I traded these 21 pairs on my watch list. And um, I don't have any specific pair that I like the most because the market is different every week, every month. So simply when the market's trending, I take it. If not, then I leave. On any pairs and that's my style but uh, I think recently Swiss franc pairs are a bit tricky so uh, I'm, a, I'm a bit away from the Swiss franc pairs Swiss franc pairs are a low priority of mine because of the spikiness in the lower time frames but uh, it may change uh, in some days maybe JPY pairs may be spiky or AUD pairs could be spiky in the future so when I see that, I put them in low priority. But uh, even so, I screen these 21 pairs every day on my watch list. But uh, yeah, I for originally, I was only trading USAJPY. Because uh, I was in the US and I was born, raised in Japan. So I'm pretty familiar with US and JPY economies. And that's why I started to take US JPY. And then I've added some other currency. I've added Euro. So I was watching Euro USD and Euro JPY and US JPY. So like little by little, I expanded the number of pairs like this. Yeah, I didn't have these 21 pairs the first beginning. I didn't really do that. 
For at the very first beginning, when I was still scalping, when I was a newbie, I was seeing more pairs, more exotic pairs too, and I was trading more and more. I, I had like uh, yeah, six screens in front of myself and doing scalping with this. I think that was like 30, 40 pairs maybe. And always looking for entry timings and exit timings real time in five minutes. And that was very tiring. So after, the, after I did that for, let's say, I think it was like uh, three months, four months. Then I thought that this is too tiring and I didn't like it. I didn't like that style of scalping. And that's why I started to take higher time frames and I deleted these exotic pairs and started to backtest on major pairs and uh, I only put these pairs on my watch list uh, if it's proved that my strategy works. So on these pairs on my watch list, I have done at least 100 trades in Forex, Forex uh, Tester. Much more than 100 trades actually. I did back testing, and then it's proved that my PF profit factor became over 5 and also my drawdown is kept below 1% per position. And then uh, my win rate was 30 to 40%. So that's why I have these pairs on my watch list because I know my system works on these pairs. So, but otherwise, I won't put these here. Yeah, let's see. Thank you for joining, everybody. Great to see you here. Pratish says, uh, are you always positive? No, of course not. <laughs> I can't be positive always. When I'm feeling not positive, then simply I don't trade either. Or I'm not going to do the live. Yeah, when I'm not positive. Oh, Ekhaga also says, I deleted so many indicators. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I have spent at least 5,000 USD to buy all these indicators. And I was also running EA back then. So I spent so much time and money to do research and to invest on these paid indicators. Yeah. But now I'm only using default indicators and they work the best. So it's like I, I went all the way around and came back to the original. David Johnson says, okay, I use three Ichimoku layers, the current time, a Kihon Suchi of three, and then nine. Do you know what I mean? For example, one day, three day, nine day. Okay. This way I can see clear view of the surrounding time frames. Okay. As long as it works for you, I think that's good. Yeah, but I don't do that. I don't want the market, the charts to be complex. So I try to make it simple and powerful. But if it works for you, that will be great. Ekhragao says, uh, I just found out about the prop, prop firm. They seem to provide trader capital. What do you think about it? I think that's good. I think that's good. In fact, uh, some of the GTS members are challenging the, uh, the prop firm to, to practice and also to support if they're success. If they pass challenge, then uh, you know they can start to earn incomes. So I think that's good. And you can save money and then uh, start to trade by your own fund in the future. All right, Augustine, thank you for joining. Movie Hero says, uh, Hi, Kay. I do believe many traders around the look for the same indicator, even if by Ichimoku indicator, why the result completely different? Uh, because of many factors, the result will be different because the understanding might be different, definition of a trade will be different, exit might be different, psychology could be different, time zone might be different too. So, 
and we are not the same, everyone. So I think that's creating dynamics in the culture. But in trading, um, sometimes it works opposite. Let's see, you can do your own, not with FTMO, you can utilize your own funds. Yep, that's true. That's what I have been doing. Yeah. 416 Street says, I admit how much you had to believe in yourself to not to do any trading for someone else or other things. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. But the belief uh, won't come in one day. Belief should be tested over time. Even still, so far, my strategy works. But um, next year, we're not, we're not sure. Next year or next month, with my definition of the trend, um, everything might be flat. And then I have to you know, fine-tune my strategy. So I'm always having that pressure of not uh, not being working the strategies for a long time so as long as it works i keep using and at least it's been it has been working for the last six years so i'm using it but i'm always thinking what if it doesn't work next month or next year so um yeah but i think that kind of uh, psychology is always uh, necessary to to really uh, you know uh, believe my system and also uh, to I mean not to believe not uh, not believe my system too much yeah then I can be objective to the market. Rohit says, um, what's your view on the stop loss? How do you use it along with the price action? Stop loss, I do use. You can search YouTube in the stop loss for XK and you can find lots of videos how I use stop loss in previous. Fly Demand says, uh, how many opening tra uh, traders that you take the same time? Oh, open positions. Uh, I take two positions at the same time. But uh, in terms of pairs, I only select one pair. Among 21, I select only one pair, specific one, to take positions. I take two positions, and until I see the break even, I don't look at other pairs. Because until I see the break even, I'm still risking 2%. If I take another trade, for example, before moving to break even, I will be risking more. So, yeah, that will be more risky. So I don't, uh, I don't take other trade unless I move the stop losses to break even. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, thank you for joining, everybody. Great to see you here. Alex says, uh, I'm currently funded with MFF after completing the challenge and diversification by trading KTS. I do this because I don't have enough money to trade a large personal account, but I have the skill. Yeah, sure, sure. You can uh, start the fund, fund trader and uh, you can start to earn income. That's possible. Vivi says, uh, you have just said that you use only pure price action strategy now. Did you stop using Ichimoku? Oh, no. I use Ichimoku too. But I can trade by the price action only too. When I was losing, I used to do this. Like I used to delete all the indicators. I even changed the color, all white candlesticks. Like this and trade myself even if I color all white candles I can still read the directions by waves in price actions so this is and this is very simple 
Uh, actually, you don't need any colors in candles. I put the blue color and white colors because I do have to explain in the live stream. And that's why I have blue and white. But if I screen myself only, I prefer all white candles. So um, let's see. maybe here is a good example. Like um, you can identify exactly from where to where it's downtrending, uptrending range. So, but um, for example, here taking the previous high from here down to here, it was bearish. For example, it was technically bearish in the wave. So here it was downtrending. So if you look sell, most probably you can make profits exactly up until this date. And here it was I wave. So there is no trend spike. So you can't really capture this. But after that, the market went down, bearish in waves again. But when you start to see bearish in waves, you always look for the sell chance. You never look for buy, look for the sell chance until here and afterwards the market turns and goes up on bullish in waves so you start to look for buy here exactly until this date and from here the market has been bearish bearish in waves so you uh, whenever you look for sell most probably you can make profits exactly until this date and then afterwards, the market had to go up on bullish new waves. So if you keep holding buys since this date, you should be profitable along the way this way. So this is, I think, one of the very simple way to capture the market directions by price actions, candlesticks, and waves. So when I see this, I always look for look uh, i always look for the trending direction so this was bearish i would look for the sell this was bullish looking for buy here i look for sell and here i look for buy only so you can practice exactly from which day to which day it's uptrending or downtrending or range like in this way uh, so, but these things you have to be exact. Like uh, you don't, if you don't have a definition of a trend, then it might be difficult. You, the your uh, anal your analysis might be a bit vague. Like let's say, if I just delete all these uh, lines again, and uh, let's say you may think, okay, so here this is range from here. It was ranging all the way. There was a big spike, but this was a fake, which I backwards. And here, maybe somewhere around here, or the breakout was the start of the downtrend. You may think like this, but this is not true, actually, in terms of price actions. If you think like this, then uh, it might be difficult to make profits over time. And afterwards, there was a I would say not like double bottom, like there was a spike in the market turns and goes up. So after the breakout of the resistance, you might start to look for the buy chance. And um, that's okay, but the real uptrend exactly started from this date. Not here. So you can already look for the buy chance on this turn over here. So this is daily time frame and in the daily time frame it might be difficult to capture this uh, new turn, turn move but uh, if you look at the lower time frames let's say one hour or four hour chart here then you might see uptrend in h1 or h4 h4 or h1 and then you can follow h1 h4 uptrend and keep trading the profits in a daily direction. So this is, if you trade by multiple time frames, it become, makes it much, much easier. 
and that's why I take multiple time frames and also I do it in three different time frames either daily or four and h1 or 30 and then 15 or 5 for entry edge yeah from this reason I take multiple time frames but uh, yeah definition of range and trend in your strategy should be very exact like this so if you haven't built that yet then uh yeah you should work on it okay Muhammad says uh since you have more than 20 pairs in your watch list do you use do you only use technical analysis or also using fundamentals to trade I don't trade by the fundamentals really in Forex. Forex pairs goes up and down. Fundamentally, recently, USD has been strong, JPY has been weak. So uh, that's the fundamentals. But uh, even so, um, the market may go opposite. And if it goes opposite, then I just take it. So in that sense, I don't really trade by the fundamentals. I m mainly trade by technical confirmations only. Simply when it's trending, I follow. When it stops trending, then I just exit. Okay, let's see. Let me check some other comments now. Well, thank you for joining everybody. Once again, great to see you here. Nabindra says, uh, would Elliott Wave plus Ichimoku combination be the great combination? What do you think? Um, I don't really, I have studied about Elliott Waves, but uh, I don't really use it in practice. So for me, I prefer Ichimoku Waves and also Ichimoku Indicators. Okay, so let me check some other comments now. All right, uh, Charlie says, I have learned from your videos that no matter what indicator may be telling you, anything can happen on the next tick, next tick and its psychology under uh, unhealthy not to accept this reality. Yeah, that's right, that's right. So, um... We have to look for confirmations. We have to first capture the market direction in the market. And once you capture market directions, then you have to look for the entry confirmations. But as Charlie says, yes, after taking time to identify whether it's up and down and identify the entry confirmations, even so, the market may reverse. And, uh, yeah, if you feel pain psychology, when it happens, then uh, it's not really healthy mindset. Yeah, you have to accept that anything can happen in the markets because you're not the one who's controlling it. Yeah, but we have to have a definition of trend and definition of the entry confirmations uh, because also to save your psychology yeah because we're not here to gamble and we're here to trade logically and objectively and rationally so yeah otherwise uh, you won't be consistent on what you do and you can't make profits in the long run also, one of the biggest challenge for everybody in psychology is that the uh, you know we tend we tend to be excited when we have big profits out of nowhere. For example, you don't know which way it's going, but let's say you take a buy, and the market goes towards the direction. It's a gambling, but uh, if you have that experience, profit by chance then uh, that winning experience is like the honey, like the sugar. So um, you will get excited and you might be addicted to win like that. 
but um, trading by strategy, following rules, and taking trades exactly by the rules and confirmations, and exit by the confirmation rules, even if you make profits over time, you don't feel fun. You feel more fun in gambling and excitement, and uh, that's why people lose a lot. Most people lose, lose a lot. Uh, because, uh, because of our projection in uh, what we feel excited in trading. But the real answer is where well, it's not really exciting. Practice is not exciting, maybe. Or following rules, creating rules and follow it. Discipline might, might not sound so exciting. But uh, that's the most important part. Gambling sounds exciting if you if you trade by, and if you get so many big profits out of one trade, you feel excited. But uh, that's not the way to make profits consi consistently in the long run. Yeah, if you want to gamble, it's okay. Just take a chance and just uh, you know get profit. But uh, if you get that big profit, then most likely you will do that again. And then you might lose. So, yeah, I think that's, that's why uh, losses and pains are always in a big, dis in a, in a big discussion in the trading market. Okay, Honest uh, says, uh, is it okay to put many trade entry on just one or two pairs only? Uh, yeah, that's fine. You can just keep uh, the trade uh, on one pair or two pairs. Keep holding. As long as it goes, that's fine. Yeah, that's what I do, basically. I don't open so many positions on so many different pairs. At the same time, I don't really do that. Okay. So let me check some other comments. Uh, yeah, oh, it looks like there's a big discussion on the uh, the trading rules and uh, firms on the comment. Movie Hero says, um, you always say in trading, would you, uh, trading world, uh, you don't need motivation and passion feeling. But I think when someone starts to do something that basically they must have some passion to drive actions. Yeah, that's true, Movie Hero. Yes, that's true. So what I mean by don't need motivation, don't need passion in trading is that no matter how much motivation you have, it doesn't affect the direction of the market. That's what I mean. When you study, when you try to improve your trace, then passion, motivation works. But uh, in terms of market directions, it doesn't work. So that's what I mean. No matter how many times you pray, the market may reverse. So. Okay. Uh, Tan says, uh, okay, what do you think about overthinking? A good thing is that you can create many scenarios at the, any time. On the other hand, you will have more distractions from your first scenario or current positions. Uh, I think overthinking or creating many scenarios is very important. And uh, so that you can psychologically prepare. What if the market will be resisted, reverse, then what would you do? And when you really see that happening, you can psychologically prepare and you can exit or you can uh, move stop to break even or you can deal with it. So creating scenarios are very important. But um, yeah, uh, even so, the market may move differently and you have to accept that fact. Yeah. 
Thank you. Yeah, this is just a, you know, this is just a free talk today. So no topics, no specific topics. I'm just talking and checking the comments and just discussing. So yeah, just feel free to join and enjoy the the, the talk. <laughs> Okay, okay, good to see you, good to see you. I see many comments now. So Saturday, I usually, um, you know, I have a, after I have a breakfast, sometimes I read books, I back test, or uh, I just, you know, have fun, just relax, and enjoy the day. Yeah, trading is fun. Trading is fun because uh, because not because we can make profit, but because these candlesticks indicators are all about psychology. Market psychology, trader psychology is reflected on these candles and wicks. And that's, I think, the most important part. That's the most interesting part in the market. Whenever I see the wicks, like whenever I see these wicks here, the sellers are screaming because sellers are putting the sales here from top with the stop loss here and sellers keep winning but as soon as the market reverse they start to lose they start to lose profits and also these buyers let's say these buyers here buyers may be here and here and uh, they may put the stop loss below the previous low maybe here these buyers put the stop loss here and when the market reverse, the stop loss was hunted and the market pushed down. So I can hear scream of both sellers and buyers when I whenever I see these weeks, I can kind of hear their scream. So that's also interesting to imagine. Yeah, you can you can be on seller side and what they think about it right now. You can be on the buyer side and what they think you can imagine. And that's uh, and when you really imagine that deeply, then you might you can find the true importance of these wicks in price actions in the waves itself too. Yeah, Trading Zone by Mark Douglas is my Bible. Yes, it's my favorite. Rohit says, uh, how many days or hours do you trade in a week? Um, I trade, and that's a um, difficult question to answer because so I have 21 screens, 21 pairs on my watch list. And when I screen these pairs, 21, it takes me only two or three minutes. And if I don't see any good setups, then simply I leave and come back after maybe four hours, three hours and do this again. And if I don't see any pairs trending or conf confirming trends, then I walk away and come back another three or four hours later and then do this again. If I don't see anything, then I will simply leave the chart for a day and come back tomorrow. So if that's the case, I, I will only take maybe six minutes up to 10 minutes to screen per day. But if I'm trading, then uh, I might have to wait for the entry edge to come. It may take 30 minutes. So I wait for the 30 minutes and enter the trade. And after I set the break even, I simply leave charts. So yeah, I would say I will take per day for trading maybe two hours or three hours at most of screening and adjusting the stop losses. Because time efficiency is very important in trading. You can spend hours, you can spend the whole day to monitor chart, but um, it doesn't correlate to how much you make in profits. So, ideally speaking, you want to have a short time to screen charts, decide which one to trade and where to trade, 
if you can shorten the time for that decision making and make the most profit from the market that's an ideal way to trade and uh, I have built my strategy in that way before I thought if I screen more if I spend more time in screening and monitoring I thought I would have more opportunities and I would have more uh, income I would more have profit at least that's what I thought after I became full-time trader from full-time worker but the reality wasn't was not uh, was not like that I have spent whole day I took 30 trades but some days still loss 30 trades 40 trades I took but loss but or someday break even someday profits so if I had that experience for like six months then I thought okay the number of trades uh, does not really matter there are how many how long I screen charts does not really matter so that's when I thought of time efficiency okay yeah so uh oops this is already 6 50 p.m in dubai time so i guess i will end this public live session and i switch to ichimoku membership live so uh yeah i do see many more comments and questions but i'm sorry i have to go so i can't cover all these but uh after i finish lives then I will come back this live and scroll and enjoy the comments and chat. So, uh, but thank you for joining everybody. It was very nice talking to you, very nice seeing you and chatting with you. So, uh, I will uh, see you tomorrow at the weekly forecast. Or if you're an Ichimoku member, then I will see you soon in about 10 minutes. So, uh, until I see you next time, in any ways, please stay healthy and stay safe and stay gold all right bye for now matane thank you